welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. This is a My First with Marley Bird video and you're going to learn how to do planned pooling in order to make this really great planned pooled argyle poncho. This is a really fascinating technique and one that you will find highly addictive once you get the hang of it. The first thing you need to do is go and download that pattern. It's free over on redheart.com. You'll find a link to it right down there in the video notes below so you don't have to go searching for it. You will notice in the pattern there's a variety of sizes and depending on the size you choose to make your poncho, you will need either three or four skeins of Red Heart Super Saver in whatever color you want the body of your poncho to be and you will need two or three skeins of Red Heart Super Saver in a variegated that works for planned pooling. Now how do you know if the variegated you chose works for planned pooling? Well there's a list. Red Heart has put together a comprehensive list of variegated yarns that have been known to work with this technique. You can find a link to that right down there in the video notes below again. Along with your yarn, you will need a variety of crochet hooks. For the sample poncho, I used a size J hook, but it might be that you need a larger hook or a smaller hook to achieve the argyle look you're going for. We'll talk more about that as I teach you this technique. As I mentioned at the start, this is a My First with Marley Bird video, meaning this is geared for beginners. But this particular video is not geared towards the beginner crocheter, it's geared towards the beginner pooler. If you've crocheted before, that's great. If this is your first time you've ever crocheted, I do not recommend this technique to be your first. Go ahead and jump in with a couple of the other videos first and then come back to this one after you've established a little bit more of your crocheting skills. This video is really supposed to help you learn how to do the planned pulling technique and then make something really fashionable with the argyle look. Now that you have your pattern, your hooks, and your yarn, let's go ahead and jump in with the planned pooling argyle poncho. This pattern has you begin with the argyle portion of the poncho. We need to build this portion first because then we build the body of the poncho on top of this. Let me show you what it is we're going for. This is the look we are trying to achieve. We need to use our variegated yarn and whatever hook size we need to use in order to achieve the look we're going for. The way we achieve this look is by manipulating the color of the stitch as we work what's called the moss stitch. This is one of those techniques where the actual stitch color is more important than the stitch you use or the gauge of the stitch. That's why you need a variety of hook sizes. This is one of those projects where you actually might change hook sizes mid-row or mid-project. It all depends on the way the yarn is dyed and how the colors are lining up in your project. So as we look down here, you can see that this black stitch right here, when we move up every other row, it moves over one stitch. Every other row, one stitch. Every other row, one stitch. As long as we maintain this sequence, we will achieve this look. Now, if you're ready to jump in, let's do this together. I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to grab my yarn. The first thing I want you to do is put a slip knot directly onto your hook. And it does not matter to me where you put your slip knot, but if you want to follow along with me, I have put my slip knot between the black portion and the white portion. Even though this yarn is made up of black and white and then some maybe light silver gray and a darker charcoal gray, we are going to treat the silver gray and the white as one color and we are going to treat the charcoal gray and the black as one color. So we're going to treat this yarn as if it's just two colors. When I put my slip knot in between those two places, the first thing I want to do is chain through a full color repeat of my yarn. So one full color repeat of the yarn will be when I get back to my white color, correct? So I am just chaining. I'm not counting or doing anything else. I'm just working my chains. 
I've worked my chains through an entire color sequence. And remember, I'm treating these light silvery gray color and the white. I'm going to treat all those as one color. So if I worked through the white, then I worked through the black, and I have the white was a loop on my hook. What I want to do now is I am going to work the first stitch into the fourth chain from hook. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. So working into the fourth chain from my hook, I will put a single crochet right there. Okay, so I've just placed a single crochet. This skipped chain three right here counts as a stitch, okay? That will count as a stitch. I then will do a chain one, because this is my moss stitch, it's chain one, single crochet. But instead of skipping a chain and putting a single crochet into the next chain, I actually want to put my single crochet around the chain. So to do that, I simply go underneath my chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. You'll notice as I do that, I tend to grab this portion of my work so that it doesn't move around and it stabilizes it. Chain one, go underneath my chain, grab my stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Chain one, go under the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two chain one. This is very similar to working into the chain space of a stitch. We're just working around our chains. The reason we want to work around our chains for this project is it will make it so that our very first row sets us up for the rest of our Argyle project and it will allow us to maneuver our stitches on the very first row to make the width of our Argyle project th the same throughout the entire um, piece. I am going to make sure I do these single crochets and chain ones until I get through one full color sequence. So just like I chained a full color sequence, I will do a moss stitch repeat through one full color sequence. You'll notice I'm just going around the chain, doing my single crochet, chain one. 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 I'm back to where I have the first color of my next color sequence on my hook. So I've worked through one full color sequence. What I want to do now is pull out this last single crochet and the last chain one. Okay, so I've pulled those out. Now that I have done that, what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to count the number of stitches in my white and I want to count the number of stitches in my black. And I want you to remember this chain three here counts as a stitch and it counts as a black stitch. So this black stitch will go into this stitch count, okay? So for me, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black. Nine white, eight black. The best thing to do at this point is go ahead and write that down on your pattern so that you can remember that. Because those stitch counts are what we're going to keep consistent throughout the entire work. So as we move on to row two, we are going to make sure that we get our nine white and our eight black. As I pick up my work to begin row two, I will start off with a chain two and turn. This chain two counts as a stitch, so we can count this chain two as our first black stitch, okay? So if we wanted that, that's one black stitch. I now will come over to the chain one spot, and I will start off with my single crochet, chain one. 
single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. You get some more yarn here, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and I'm just going along and right now I'm just going until I hit my next colorway and then I'm going to count and see. Now right here as I start my next stitch you can see that it is already my black stitch. So let's see how many single crochets I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. We had nine down there. We want nine up here. Now let's try and get our eight black stitches. Remember that this stitch right here it counts these chain twos count as a stitch. So that's one. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now that I've gotten the correct number of stitches in each color, I'm ready to chain two and turn and begin my row three. Now row three is vital because this is where you will begin to see if your argyle is taking shape. So really pay attention at this point. As we take a look down here, I'm at the end of my row so I will chain two and I will turn. And this first one here, I can see my First chain three right there was black, right? So I want to make sure if I'm going on the diagonal that this first one is black. So it is, which is great. So I go ahead and do my single crochet, chain one. When working row three, we want to pay attention to what happened on row one. So I just completed this black stitch and on row one, it was a white stitch. This is my clue that my next stitch needs to be white. So if I go into my next chain one space and I create that stitch and it's white, I am on a good path. I can chain one and I can keep going. And you'll notice that whatever color the stitch is beneath the chain one space you're working into, that lets you know what the color of your next stitch needs to be. So let's keep going along here. And all of these are all white. See, I'm working at this chain one space and right underneath it is this white stitch. So I know that the next one needs to be white. So I do my chain one chain one space, that one's white, so the next one needs to be white, that one's white, so the next one needs to be white, and so this next one has to be white, but look, as I do this, I'm starting to get half white, half gray, which is not good. I don't want half, half and half. I want those to be one white color. So what I can do now is take out my hook and go ahead, rip out a couple of stitches and make those stitches a little bit tighter. If you find that you need to change crochet hooks to do that to a smaller crochet hook, you could do that. If this was um, opposite where you needed to make those stitches bigger, you could do that as well. Now look here, I made those stitches a little bit tighter and now the stitch right there that needed to be white is white. And you can see right underneath this stitch is a black stitch, which lets me know my next stitch needs to be black. So I chain one go into the next stitch and it's black. So I can keep going just like this. Chain one and I'm just working to the chain one spaces, working the moss stitch, but I'm making sure that my color lands where I need it to go. I'm at the end of the row, I chain two and turn and just like before I want to make sure that my colors line up one stitch over. So I will put my single crochet into this first stitch there and as I go to the next stitch because I'm looking underneath this black one, it was white, this next stitch needs to be white and it is. Chain one and I can carry on. Notice that if I keep this sequence, I don't have to count anymore the number of stitches I have in white or the number of stitches I have in black. 
I just need to make sure I maintain the stitch color and have it move over by one. Following my pattern, if you're right-handed, your stitches will move over to the left by one. If you're left-handed, your stitches will move over to the right by one. As we come to this stitch, you can see that I put my white stitch and there's a black stitch underneath it. So when I do my chain one and work into the next chain one space, that stitch needs to be black as well, and it is. So as I carry on, I just make sure that my stitches are moving over. And by treating the zebra yarn as if it's just two colors, it makes it a lot easier. If you wanted to treat the zebra yarn as if it had distinct colors, where it was silver, white, silver, dark gray, black, dark gray, you could totally do that. But if you wanna jump in and really make it as easy as possible, just treat it as if it's two colors. Once you're to the end of the row, you chain two, and turn, and once again, you wanna look at the row below the one you're working in to make sure that your colors are lining up where they need to. Now this last one I worked into was black, so the next one I need to work into needs to be black. That's a little bit half and half, it's too half and half for me. So what I would do is I would just pop back to this one, I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit before I do my chain one, and then do my stitch, there you go. And you can see right underneath this black one is a white one, and that lets me know that my next stitch needs to be white. So I chain one, and I can follow along in my sequence. Once again, you'll notice I'm not counting anymore. I'm just making sure that my colors are landing in the correct place. Now right here, I'm white on white, so I wanna make sure this next one's white, but now my white one is on top of this black one. So as I do my chain one and work into my chain one space, I need to make sure it's black. See how that black one is now staggering? I'm gonna keep going here. Let's work on this together. I'm assuming you already know how to do single crochets and chains, but you are here to learn this technique. So I am not going slow as I do my single crochets and chains because I know you know how to do those. But I do want you to understand how you find the color placement. I just chained two and turned, and I'm still working in my moss stitch here. Now I want you to notice this. I have a black one on top of a white one, which means my next one needs to be white. But in the way I have worked this, you can see it looks black. So what I've done here is I've made these stitches too tight, so I need to make them looser. And because I don't wanna make these two just, just those two looser, I'm actually gonna rip back down to the row below and make those ones a little bit looser. I just got excited and made them a little bit too tight, but I need them to eat up a little bit more yarn. So I'm just going to loosen them up a little bit as I do the single crochets. Turn, now let's see where I land. I bet I land pretty darn good. Chain one, and then this one. There we are. And I'm gonna get my white where I need it to be, and I keep going. Now one thing I do wanna mention is you'll notice I'm using a J hook and my stitches are a little bit loose. And I'm typically a very tight crocheter and I like um, a more substantial crocheted piece. But when you're working with something for a garment, you don't want it to be like Kevlar. You want it to have some drape and flow. So I am going to highly suggest that you really try and achieve the Argyle look with a larger hook because you will get a better drape on your poncho. If you're using a really small hook to get the Argyle look, you're gonna have a really stiff piece to your poncho and that's just not gonna be as pretty as it could be. Don't forget that you always wanna work into the chain two space at the end because that is a stitch. Remember, that is a stitch. I am simply just going along, working in my moss stitch, just like before. And you can see here, look, I made those a little bit too loose this time. So instead of that one being black, I have it white. So I need to tighten these ones up. So I can tighten just these ones up here at the start, I think and reach what I need it to do. Maybe not, I have to go back down here. 
See, I got so used to making them loose before that I made them a little bit too loose. This is why I don't suggest this to be a first time project for a first time crocheter is because you have to fiddle with the size of your stitches so much that sometimes it can just be a little bit fiddly. As I come to the end, I'll chain two and let's see if I can get it now. And there we are. I got my black now. And then I can carry on with my white. I'm going to set this down after this row is done so that you can see what we've done together. So I'm gonna set this down and let's take a look. You can see right off the bat where this black stitch is moving up and over to the right every other row. And consequently, it's doing the same thing in this direction because we turn our work and come back. So you can tell right here that our work is beginning to get the Argyle look. Remember down here at the beginning when I had you do your crochet stitches around your chain? Well, what's great about this is you can now maneuver your chain so that way the stitches are the same width as the body of your piece. All of these extra chains down here, you're actually going to undo them and weave in your ends when it's all said and done. And by weaving in your ends, that will lock this last single crochet into place. And then we will put a border around these stitches to make it even more secure. Let's go ahead and take a look at a piece that I've worked up a little further along. And I wanna show you how to add a new ball of yarn. Here's a sample that I've worked up a little further along and I began this one just as we began the one together and I treated the dark gray and the black as one color and the light gray and the white as one color. You can see that it really begins to take shape all the way along and it really does work out. I still have all of my unused stitches, my chains right down there and I'm here at the top and I am ready to add a new ball of yarn. The first thing you need to make sure of before you join a new ball of yarn is that you have the same die lot. The die lot is what is written on your ball band. So right here this is die lot 6464 and this is die lot 6464. The chances of your yarn having the same color sequence consistency is greater if you have the same dye lot of yarn. So make sure that you have the same dye lot of yarn. That's the first thing. The second thing is you want to find where your yarn matches up in the color sequence. So for me, I have cut this yarn where it is in the white still and I have some white stitches in my work. I would actually rip out all of the white and I'm gonna get to where my black is and I'll put my hook back into that space. Okay, so it's right where my black is beginning to work into my white. And I'll find that same piece, that same portion on my new yarn. So obviously this is not it, so here's the black. So I want to get to the end of my black and here, right here, happens to be that portion right there. Can you see that? See where those line up and you can see where that continues on? Just like so. So what I'm doing here is I am putting the new yarn right next to the old yarn. Can you see that? I'm going to let the old yarn fall away and I will yarn over with the new yarn yarn over with my new yarn and pull through those stitches to complete that stitch. Okay, now as I carry on and I chain one, if I find I need to tighten that up, I just need to pull my yarn a little bit and I can tighten up and pull the color into place wherever I need it to be. But at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and continue on with my pattern with my new yarn 
and I have my old yarns just hanging out. If you wanted to, you could just give them a nice little tie together, just like so. Maybe trim them up a little bit, leaving at least four to six inches, so that way you have something to weave in later. But that's as simple as it is to add a new ball of yarn. And you will need to add a new ball of yarn to this project because it takes at least two balls. And if you're making one of the larger sizes, you will break into your third ball. Once you've added your new ball of yarn, you go ahead and carry on in your stitch pattern, making sure that you are lining up your colors in the correct place. So you need to do whatever you need to do to get those colors in the correct place. If it's tightening stitches, go ahead and do that. If it's loosening stitches, go ahead and do that. Sometimes you might need to actually do a half double crochet instead of a single crochet. You can do that as well. There are more tips and tricks on how to perfect your planned pooling if you want to check it out in the 10 secrets to perfect planned pooling video. As you work this portion of the poncho and reach the designated measurement, you will then move on and you will work one row in moss stitch in your body color. So for me, that would be black. For you, it might be something else. So I'm gonna show you that portion now. Let's pretend I'm at the end of my Argyle project and I've just finished a row three. I'm on my last single crochet and I've already yarned over and pulled up a loop, but I wanna go ahead and grab my body color and I'm gonna use blue just so that you can see the stitches better than if I were to use black. I yarn over my hook with my new color and pull that through the two loops on my hook. I would go ahead then and chain two, just like I've been doing this whole time, turn my work, and then working in moss stitch, I would just work with this body color all the way down this row, okay? So I'm just working in my body color all the way down the row, working in moss stitch, okay? What this is gonna do is it's going to put a really nice trim, this is our trim, on the argyle portion of our poncho. Once we do this to this end, we will then go to the opposite end of our argyle portion and do it over there as well. We will also weave in our tails. So let me get to the end of this row so you can see what that looks like. And then we will turn our work and we'll complete the first finishing. To the end of my row, I chain one, go ahead and snip my yarn. I always leave four to six inches and I fasten that off. So you can see here, let's pull off, I'm gonna cut my zebra yarn as well so it's out of the way. You can see right here, this puts a really nice border right here on my work, okay? So I have a nice little border right here. Let me clean that up and it just finishes off that side, okay? So obviously, this blue looks really good with the zebra, actually. So what I wanna do now is I wanna do the first finishing on the opposite side. Let's turn our work and get to the opposite end, and working right here into the chain three space, we will join our body color with a slip stitch into the whole space there. So I'm just joining with the slip stitch. I chain two. And then working into the space between this single crochet and that single crochet, and working around the chain, I go ahead and do a single crochet. Chain one. Working between this single crochet and that single crochet, working around the chain, I do a single crochet, chain one. I carry on doing this down the entire row. You'll notice it's just doing the moss stitch. I'm doing the moss stitch on the opposite side of my foundation chain. And I'm just gonna do this all the way down the row. At the end of my row, I wanna make sure after I do my single crochet chain one, I will put a slip stitch into the chain right next to this last single crochet. I'm just gonna do a slip stitch right there. And then I will finish off my work give that a nice pull. So now that side of my argyle is now finished just like 
this side of my argyle. You see that? See how pretty that is? Let's fold this up, you can see. There they are, they're both finished. Now it's time to go ahead and let's deal with these unused chains. What I like to do is go ahead and I'm gonna snip up here just a little bit closer so that way I can get the unused chains a little bit smaller, okay? And you'll notice that you have these loops and you just wanna gent gradually rip out undo each of these chains. Now you can't just pull on the tail, otherwise that'll just create another knot. So you've just got to pull out each loop individually, which is why I cut the extra loops off, because I don't need to undo all of those. Just enough to where I have some tail to actually weave in. So I want to make sure I don't accidentally undo the last, so this one here, this is the one that I did my slip stitch in, so I don't want to undo that one, and I'm just going to give that a nice pull, and once I pull my tail on that last one, it locks it into place. So what I can do now is thread my yarn onto a tapestry needle, and I really like these bent tip tapestry needles. Go ahead and thread it onto there and I will take it and weave in my ends at this point. So I am just going back right through here, going back through my foundation chain, pulling my end through, see how that works? And I can grab the yarn and come back the opposite direction that I went in, making sure that I'm not going through to the opposite side Give that a nice snip. That's why I like a nice long tail because it allows it, it makes it easier to weave in. Then you can weave in these ends as well. Really simple. Just take a moment, weave in your tails, and they are going to be out of the way. Once you have the argyle portion of your poncho complete, the rest is really cake. You're gonna make the body of your poncho in moss stitch, just like you did the argyle portion. Only this time, you don't have to worry about where the color placement is because it's all one color. But let me show you how to get the poncho portion started. Go ahead and take your planned pulling portion and turn it sideways so you're looking at the length. We will start right down here in the chain tube portion of your final trim. Go ahead and grab your body color and join it with a slip stitch into the chain two portion. Once you've joined with the slip stitch, chain two, which counts as a stitch now and throughout just as it did before. Now you will skip a single crochet row and you will join with a single crochet in the next chain two turning chain, okay? You're maintaining the moss stitch and placing the single crochet in the chain two space of every other row. So I've completed my single crochet, I chain one, I go two rows down to the turning chain of that row and work a single crochet. Chain one, two rows down to the turning chain of that row, work a single crochet, chain one. Two rows down to the turning chain of that row, chain one. See how this works? Every other row is getting a single crochet and then I chain one. And then I go down to, I skip a row and go to the next row, which is the chain to turn, and I do my single crochet there. As you're working along, you'll notice that the stitches begin to line up nice and even, and that's because our row gauge is the same as our stitch gauge as we maintain the moss stitch along the side here. At the end of this first row, you should notice that your row right here should be nice and flat and should not be rippling. This is where the body of your piece is going to begin.
the number of stitches on this first row and the subsequent rows of the body all depends on the number of rows you had in your finished piece. So that's why you are not going to find the number of stitches you need to complete for this first row. As long as you do your moss stitch and put a single crochet every other row and maintain the same gauge as you got on your argyle portion, you will achieve a really great look on your body. What's really awesome here is you know how the moss stitch works from this point on. You will now chain two and then work a single crochet in each one of the chain one spaces, so on and so forth. You'll do that until your piece measures the width that you need it to be from the bottom of your argyle portion. So you will repeat the, the moss stitch all the way through until your full piece, including this bottom trim, measures either 27 inches, 31 inches, or 35 inches. Once you've reached that measurement, it will be time to section off the portion of your poncho that will be continued on for the fold over cowl. Let me show you how you do that. The fold over cowl portion of our poncho is super cute and it's so easy to accomplish. I can't wait to show you how you do this. Essentially what we want to do is when your poncho is complete, you want to section off the center portion of your poncho and continue on doing moss stitch in that bit. Now depending on the size you're making, it would be either 20 inches, 22 inches, or 24 inches in the center. And that's what we want to mark off. So we're going to pretend that we are marking off the center 20 inches on this particular poncho. What I will want to do is I will take a marker and I will place it in a chain one space and then place it in the chain one space on the opposite side, okay? The reason I want to do that is I want to be able to join with a slip stitch into this chain one space and then chain two, and then carry on through to this chain one space. Very similar to what we did down here when we were building the body of our poncho on top of our argyle portion. Once we have these bits marked off, we do just that. We would <clears throat> go ahead, join our yarn with a slip stitch into that chain one space, chain two, which counts as a stitch, and then carry on with our moss stitch pattern, just working over the stitches that are within our two markers. We would do this until this cow portion measures 10 inches, 11 inches, or 12 inches. It all depends on how dramatic you want it to be. It's a really simple technique and it's really fun and trendy and fashionable once it's all completed. You can see there, I joined with my slip stitch, chain two, and worked all the way through to where my second marker is. I could continue back and forth on this until it measured the length I needed it to measure for my cowl. Once I've achieved that, we're just gonna suspend our imagination here a little bit and pretend I have done that. What you will do is you will take your poncho and you will fold it in half, just like so, okay? And this would be our cowl portion, okay? You would seam this portion right here of your poncho just with a simple whip stitch. You'd whip stitch it together right there. I'm gonna show you on the actual poncho what that looks like. This might be a little difficult to see, but this is my cowl neck, okay? And then right next to my cowl neck, this right here, is my shoulder seam and it's simply just whip stitched together okay and that's the only portion that is seamed of my poncho right up this and then I did seam up two inches into the cowl because I think that really makes it so it lays flat and looking at my other camera let's hold this up I'm gonna fold that over can you see here this portion right here, did I cover my microphone? Sorry. This portion here is what was seamed and right up into this portion of the cowl. So that way when this cowl is folded over, it can lay nice and flat and you get this really great look. 
I love how the pooled portion lays at an angle and it is just such a beautiful little addition to such a simple poncho. I know you can complete this project and it will be a little bit difficult at first to achieve the planned pooling argyle portion. But if you are patient and make sure that you get the right color of stitch in the right place, you will have nothing but success. If you need a little extra help, there's a wonderful group on Facebook called the Plant Pooling with Crochet Group, and they are there with lots of helping hands. So you can always go over there and say, hey, I'm working on Marley's poncho and I need a little help. I'm sure somebody will jump in and give you a helping hand. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want some more instructions on planned pooling, again, I do have two other videos you can go check out. One is the basic best planned pooling tutorial, and the other is 10 secrets to perfect planned pooling. So take what I taught you here, apply it with the other two videos, and you are going to be geared up for success. I hope you like this poncho, and please share with me pictures if you do make it. I would love to see it. This is a My First with Marley Bird video, and I hope that you will come back here for more on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I am Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Looking for more Marley Bird? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Click right down there and you will find more videos just like this teaching you how to knit or crochet, all brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. Go ahead, click away. Don't be shy. Don't forget to smash that like button.